Hello everyone and welcome back to the Daldot tribe, our 101 Dalmatians tribe that we have here in Niche version 0.5.1. And as you guys know from yesterday, the 0.5.5 update has indeed come out, but it's pretty unstable. So I decided let's go ahead and keep going with our Nichelings in this particular version. Though the 101 Dalmatians challenge is such a fun one and one a little bit close to my heart, since you guys know our Sims 3 101 Dalmatians challenge uh, is one of my favorite series we've ever done on our channel that we may actually do this one again if we can complete this and or we don't complete this and we end up having a complete extinction like unfortunately happened uh, yesterday when we were actually playing with the dreamer tribe I learned a lot about Savannah grasslands let me tell you but we may actually do the 101 Dalmatians in the new version of the game or the final release version of the game in the future so let's just keep that in mind but we're gonna be here for now I'm very happy with this I'm having so much fun and come on Pongo and Perdita were the perfect starter animals for that when they randomly generated in with spots and this beautiful white fur I knew that it was fate so we're gonna stay with this group for a little while and Pongo is on his final day and now that Perdita has passed away I feel like he would encourage his children to go and seek out new lands a new life and a new home of their own and I wonder if this particular tribe tends to be like guided by the main breeding male and female and all the rest tend to be really like a gathering food, gathering resources, maybe even providing a little bit of prickly and clawed defense. But otherwise, I, I wonder if they would like kind of stay in one spot for life. And I wonder if they wouldn't move until the main breeding male and female passed away uh, at like the main nest area. So we might actually make it so there's only like one main hub of breeders and the rest are kind of just on the periphery. And that will also pop possibly help us with the goal we have to breed in some dots. Thank you guys, by the way, for letting me know, and I'm still getting used to all of the different mutation menus since we play across multiple versions, which is why it kind of took me a while to cotton on to this fact, but for letting me know that Pongo actually has no pattern in his slots and I actually didn't notice that believe it or not I did not notice that because I'm not used to thinking in terms of the pattern types and the pattern variants so what we're going to do for his children who are uh, potential breeders with their lovely white fur and really high fertility is we will make sure to go into their mutation menu and we will select that they will have a pattern so we'll select like um, tiny pattern medium pattern big pattern just anything that will be other like like there we go like dots we'll make sure to select dots so that we'll try to get that no pattern out of the family tree because we need to chuck that if we're gonna have hope for being able to tackle some of the goals that we have also interestingly enough it seems like our mutations are still unlocked for this tribe even though we do not have any barinas in this particular tribe uh, I've never adopted a barina into this tribe so I actually wonder if everything that you see, including like the web tine legs, I'm pretty sure that was locked. So I think all of the mutations that we're currently looking at are actually from the Bunya tribe. The Bunya tribe's mutations that they struggled and struggled to create uh, are actually here instead. So I wonder if that's going to be true for the final version of the game. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. It could make things trickier, harder, or easier for us depending on what we're gonna do challenge Okay, I don't want to give away too much. But anyway, uh, high fertility. So let's try to survive for 100 days and get that high fertility so that we can have some spotty babies when the time comes. All right, so enough rambling. We're going to go ahead and have Pongo basically say to all his kids, all right, everyone, I think you need to go forth and find your own home, your own nest, and really try to encourage them to leave. To which I don't know if Zaiden would go. He's pretty happy with being here. So we'll come back to questioning if Zaiden would leave in a little bit but little baby Ami would definitely come on down I think Pongo might come over and like gather up this uh, rabbit uh, for his kids and then we'll go ahead we'll have Kaku it's really hard to see their names when they're there we go we'll have Kaku come over here it's really really hard to see their names when they're all white by the way that's kind of interesting and he'll kind of dig around in the ground maybe looking for some food 
food. And let's see, we'll go ahead and have Tomomi maybe dig around for food as well. So they're kind of just like maybe searching in the sand out of curiosity while hopefully also unlocking some of the very neat genes like the platypus speak. Yeah, look at this. All of the, the events are still almost unlocked. That's interesting because that was what we did with the bunyas. I wonder if it's be, it, like they didn't take the bunyas save file. So I guess it's just if you've played that version of the game. I don't, I, I, I think they're going to make it so you have to unlock it for each try, but we'll have to see. All right, so let's go ahead and Koana will jump over. She can grab one berry and then she can jump over and little uh, air core can jump down over here. Uh, I think it would be really hard for some of our creatures to leave the berry bushes. Like L Lucia, Larcia here has been in charge of this berry bush forever. So I think she would be very sad to have to leave it, but we will go ahead and leave it and we'll just gather up everybody that we can. I still don't know if Zaiden would go. I feel like he, he doesn't want to. Does he have any traits we desperately need? Not really, because he has like the, the beige fur. But the thing is we would probably take everybody just because uh, they're very family oriented, I feel. So Polly is gonna go ahead and destroy that berry bush. Zaiden is gonna go ahead and start his moves to get over there too. And then I could probably get Polly over here and she can destroy that berry bush on her way out as well. There we go. All right, so we've got everybody here. We'll go ahead, collect up from the berry bush this round, destroy it next round, get a little bit more food. And Pongu is just dispensing his final words of wisdom to all of his children before sending them on. And hopefully they can find a good home. Goodbye, Pongu. <laughs> Hopefully they can find a good home on the new island and they will be able to find mates of their own or choose amongst their siblings, I suppose. And they will be able to find plenty and plenty of food. So let's go ahead, jump on down. There we go. And we'll destroy this berry bush. I probably could have gathered a little bit more from it. Uh, and we'll go ahead and destroy this nest and just kind of like leave Pongo and Perdita's bones here. And we'll have Koana guide us to the next land. She does have some black fur, but hmm, we'll have to see. And basically all of the children inherited Pongo's uh, no pattern. So we're going to have to change that by making sure they can start thinking about dots. And let's travel to the new island. There we go. Hopefully I chose right. When we played with the Bunyas, we went to the left and, oh, haha, <laughs> pun, this time we went to the right, eh, eh? And uh, this is the new island that we're at. And I have not had a chance to look at what it might appear like. Ooh, this one looks like it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, guys. Wow. Look, it has like this pond area. Oh my gosh. And it has a really strict cliffside. Look at that. It's like a part of it just fell into the sea. Oh my goodness. Huh. And I think they're going to want to find a nice nest. And we might want to head towards this area. I think this area would be where our, our little Dalmatian, our Dal Dots, would want to settle. Uh, but I think some of them might grow kind of curious about water. Waterways and water. So who would be our main breeders? I kind of think... It might be Larcia might try to have some children. And she could actually have children with Stargaze. So I feel like Larcia and Stargaze really are in a position and they really have the kind of patternings where they could be the next leaders of our tribe. And I really think that's what we'll kind of do. Kind of like meerkats or if you were watching our uh, Zoo Tycoon 2 special that we had earlier this morning on the, um, the Ethiopian wolves. They also have a group where they live in a tribe forming. They, or they live in a pack formation, I should say. And the pack only has one set of breeding like males and female, like one breeding male, one breeding female. And the rest of the pack will help to take care of the young and the rest of the pack will help to gather resources and defend territory, but they won't have children themselves. So I think we may do that. We may just kind of only have one breeding set at a time and everybody else will be focused for now. Maybe that'll change over time, like when love starts becoming a factor. But everybody else may be kind of focused on like listening to the, leader, the leaders of the pack. So let's go ahead and we're gonna turn these guys into the alphas. Larsa and Stargaze, Larcia, excuse me, are now going to be the alphas. So we'll go ahead and start with having everybody sort of spread out. There's some fish right here that Air Corps can actually gather. Uh, I think that, who got it? Who got the leech? Oh no. 
<laughs> and Zaiden, I think he doesn't like to be here, but I think he really hates bugs and leeches. So he'd yank that leech off of Stargaze's side. And then Lacoon might come over here and start playing with the clam shells. And so might Kaku. Uh, Kaku, he does have that nice white fur. Uh, oh, and by the way, a lot of you guys voted on doing hard mode where we have to have uh, like the white fur and I'll say the white and beige mix. Like making sure we have the white fur and then uh, blackish or dark dots are what a lot of you guys have said. I might be kind of lenient on the dots because I think it'd be really cool to see how many spotty patterns we can come in. But I, I will agree now that we won't do something like beige and brown fur. Like this side of the family would not qualify for our 101 numbering when we're trying to count to that many of our dial dot creatures. All right, so Aircore I think is gonna be down here with Lacoon and we'll have Kaku kind of watch over them. And I think this group might be really excited by the waterway and they really wanna see what's going on down here. And Kawana, Kawana has always been a little bit more, uh, how do I put it? Like she's a little bit more traditional. So I think she's in search of a nice berry bush. And I think uh, Tomomi, might kind of just want to be a little bit of the defensive type. He doesn't really have a lot of defensive stats, but I feel like he would just feel like he's a good defender. And Amy is a good little defender, so we'll have her go with her sister. And then Amalaki. Amalaki has always just kind of been like, a pretty responsible fellow. So we'll have him go and be with the main group exploring in the front too. Meanwhile, Stargaze, we'll have Stargaze. And we'll have Larcia, his sister, start thinking about children. So let's see how far we can get Larcia to go. And then I think we'll go ahead, kind of let her settle down right here. Yeah, we probably shouldn't wait too long. She only has a few days left to live. So we'll let her settle down right here and make a nest and we'll have Stargaze go and join her. And they kind of took up positions high up. Kind of like, again, the lead meerkats in a meerkat society. So we'll say they're gonna be our main two breeders and we'll set them as our alphas. So this is sort of like a um, queen bee challenge, except we're going to just keep it to one breeding pair. And then when they pass away, we'll pick the next one, which may we may throw that out the window, like I said, with love uh, amongst our creatures. But right now, everybody's related, so there's not really a lot of love going around. Uh, Tomomi, you managed to pick up a leech. Gross. I really, really think that Zaiden hates leeches and hates bugs and nasty things and he's also probably quite cranky that he had to leave his precious berry bushes so we'll take care of him in a second but let's set larcia's traits and it's kind of interesting because we're sort of going to be very laid back about most of these strategic traits for gathering food and defense at least for a while and we're really going to try to focus more on those appearances so let's try to encourage her to have dots for sure so we're gonna try to increase our chance of dots. In fact, I think if we increase our chance for dots, like, can we get it like 100%? Can I double dose on dots and just like get a dotted spotty child? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. That would kind of be almost too easy if I could do that. So we're gonna do dots like on all sides, just because, just because they don't have many days to live and I wanna kind of see. So will they 100% have a child with dots now? Is that how the genetics are gonna work? Dots! There's dots and spots! Okay! <laughs> that wasn't so hard after all. That was almost too easy, to be completely honest, um, to introduce dots like that. But it does waste any improvements we could have made. And he's a fighter! Look at this little guy! He's got double claw, he has got those poison things, recessive, that fish and tail. He's got really good, he's a healthy, spunky fighter who definitely probably wants to like save the day, lead the way. We're gonna name him uh, Dunika, Duniku. And that it looks like a really cool name. So Duniku, we're gonna go ahead and give you that name and it means a swift and loving male, which is one of the cool names that was left behind in a gigantic niche name list left just a couple days ago from you guys in our comment section. Thanks so much for that. But I like little Dune for short and he's got a big body and everything. He's gonna fight. He's like ready to fight. So he's, I'm, I'm all excited about dots, but it just hit me. He's one of 101. <laughs> 
niche links that we need. We gotta get like focused on food for crying out loud. So on that note, we're gonna come down up oh, on that note, we're gonna remove that nasty leech. And then we're gonna have air core. Oh my gosh, air core has a leech too. Okay, so we're actually going to get most of our food from leeches, it seems. Uh, and then we're gonna see if we can do a little bit of fishing in just a moment over here too. So we'll have air core come over and join them with fishing. And we'll crack open all those clam shells. I think Lacoon's excited too. And Taku, did he get another? Yeah, he got another clam. Nice, they're gathering up lots of clams. I don't think Ami is that interested in the water despite having a name that means rain. Zaiden's just gonna shove everybody out of the way so he can find his berry bush, thank you very much. Polly is super sweet. Uh, we'll go ahead and have her just kind of gather up what she can. Fessa, who was the itty bitty baby, just kind of tagging along. Uh, she'll just kind of tag along with her family, try to see what's going on. And then let's see, we'll go ahead and have Lacia step this way and remove that nasty leech and we'll go ahead ah i'm so sorry amalaki amalaki was trying to take care of tomomi tomomi would just have to like apologize to his brother oh we found a berry bush and we'll have these ones another berry bush and this one's poison it smells bad i hope my nichelings won't touch it all right we'll come this way stargaze will be with his mate there we go and kalana why are you already missing a move, my dear? I feel like Kawana would just try to keep an eye on everybody in a very responsible way. So there we go. All right, we'll start moving them over into the grasslands and we'll push them towards this island. Um, but man, I mean, yeah, I'm already like, well, that was, that was almost too easy to get dots. And with the mutations we can set, now he definitely has dots, so he'll pass those on. And now we could just say, okay, so your pattern your pattern coloring, because I think the pattern, yeah, the pattern, now we would just say, okay, you always have black pattern. We could actually end up making a Dalmatian way easier than I thought it would be to create one. So I'm not sure how I feel about that, but really getting the cosmetics is only one step of the whole process uh, for sure, because then we have to focus on keeping our entire tribe alive long enough to have 101 of them so yeah dots may have come a little bit a little bit sooner and a little bit easier than i anticipated but that doesn't mean that the end of the challenge is already here in fact we're, we've still got 100 more creatures to go so let's go ahead and continue on we'll have kaku gather this up jump through the water yeah he'll he'll go ahead and keep exploring and lacoon let's see there's a, there's another Oh, there's a whole bunch of fish and Lacoon can actually fish. Oh, dang it. The fish like just managed. Get over here. There we go. I think that this group. Wow, there's so many, so many clams, so many clams. I think that this group would be very excited about all of the clams. Let's see. And Amalaki can come over. He can help out with these clams. Let's see. Algae, collect nest material, crack open these clams. And then Tomomi. I'll send Tomomi kind of over here. I'm very worried. This is really kind of uh, kind of like creepy looking landscape for them to sort of be pressed right up against if you ask me. So hopefully Tomomi won't get hurt, but I'm really enjoying the fact we already have a, a spotty creature. All right, so let's go ahead and clear the way out. I feel like Hoana would be very worried and she would want to clear every single piece. Oh, look, there's a nut. It's really close to those poison things though. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing. All right, I think Amy would be really distrustful of all of the swamp land and she would really want to get in there and kind of examine that. And then Zaiden, just wants everybody away from his berry bush. He finally has another berry bush and he's very happy about that. All right, Fessa will come down. Wow, there's a lot of food over here. So I think we'll I think we'll be fine. Polly's gonna jump over. I think that she'll be willing to take her little nephew kind of under her paw. Because again, because this is a big family where they kind of take care of like all of the others who are not the main breeders take care of the babies. I feel like as soon as they would have the babies, they would just kind of like send them off and be like, okay, there you go. We're gonna go with your aunts and uncles now. So I think we're gonna go ahead and move Larcia. Should I move her across? Is there the scent of another? No berries nearby. All right, Larcia, I guess you can just go ahead and stay here for now then. And we'll have Stargaze. He can jump over here and help out with the clams for now. 
All right, and Larcia, now she should have a second spotty child just like that. Oh my gosh! Look at all the colors that we're getting already. Another spotty baby boy. All right. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit easier in terms of uh, gathering up a whole bunch. Whoa! A little bit easier in terms of having spots and dots than I thought. Almost too easy. Almost too easy. But now we just have to keep everybody alive. So now we have a, uh, a rogue female with Digging Paw who has just showed up. And her name is Ralami. So I think Koana. Koana. Are you going to take her on me? I feel, I feel like these two are already like best friends. They just meet, their eyes meet next to this poison grass and just burst out laughing. And they immediately, these two are immediately best friends in my opinion. And I think Ame would quiz Ralami here and ask her like, where'd she come from? And what does she think about these areas? Uh, could she explain these poison berries? And I think that the arrival of Ralami would warn our nichelings just in the nick of time, don't touch these berry bushes. Cause I could definitely see Zayden making that mistake and wanting to like eat them. So she may actually be a good import female. Oh, ENF. Yeah, ENF immunity. Fantastic. And she's not very good at seeing things. And she has toxic body recessive. So I would say she's she's from a tribe that's from the swamp. And she pops out and there's all these oddballs just standing here. And she might end up being a future mate to our young boys over here, to one of our young males. I'm actually kind of leaning. Oh, and I need to name this little guy kind of leaning towards and let's zip around our gigantic fantastic name list that you guys have provided to Takel. I like that one. So Takel, whose name is really hard to see when he has white fur. Uh, I, I'm kind of leaning towards him. Look at that high fertility, A and home island immunity. Very nice. I think that he might be able to catch Ralami's eye in the future, but right now I think she'd be buddy buddy with Koana. All right, so Koana and Ralami will start adventuring into the wild, and I think Ame will have been warned right in the nick of time not to clear away the thorns because those will actually cause damage and not to eat the berries. So they have been warned that the swamp is very dangerous indeed. Let's see. And I think that Ame would kind of take that as a personal challenge to dive deeper into the swamplands and to see if she can defend her tribe in some way. So we'll have to see what she finds in there. And I don't think Tomomi would be entirely excited about that idea, but heck if he's going to let his little sister go alone. And then Amalaki can get that nasty leech off. Ah, Amalaki! Oh, he's such a sweetheart, always trying to help everyone and always suffering for it by getting hurt because he's always licking his uh his hedgehog spiky siblings i'm sorry amalaki i think that kaku would feel really bad about that so we'll send him we'll send him down this way and he can resume exploring along the edge of the beach where there's so many fish look at all these fish oh my gosh there's fish for days I think that's gonna get our little fishers like Akori and the others really excited. So we've got a little fishing group who's super excited to chase the fish down over here. All right, and Fessa I think is very happy to work on all of these nuts and Polly will help her out. Ooh, Polly, get the fish. All right. And then we'll go ahead and we'll have Larcia. I feel like with this tribe, having a nest that's kind of in a high up location is sort of something the main breeding group would do. So I'll send little Dune to kind of come over here and help out Fessa. And I think that Larcia would actually kick Zaiden out of the way. Like Zaiden, you have to get down. This is, oh, I thought we had another like rogue creature show up all of a sudden, but this is going to be uh, Larcia's spot to build a new nest to the highest location that they can find near everyone. I think this spot's definitely a little higher, but they, they do want to keep near everyone. And I think that's going to be something that we'll do with our main breeding group. So they're gonna have another spotty child. I'm actually a little bit tickled at how easy it was. Now we only need 99 more spots, but I think the dunes really light spots kind of don't count <laughs> before we're able to like beat our challenge already. That's so interesting. 
All right, Rilami will go with Kawana, and I think they're they're going to go to more peaceful areas. Like Rilami will go ahead and show everybody where there's better spots than the swamp that her people have normally come from. Like this mixed land is probably where she's from, and she knows you avoid the swamp if you can help it. And Zaiden is not gonna budge. He's gonna guard that berry bush. He's cranky that everybody like made a move here. He doesn't want to be here. But dang, I can't believe we already have spots, guys. Like really strong defensive spots. This might be a lot easier than I thought. There, might, there may be less of a challenge to it than I imagined. And if it turns out to be way too easy and we just manage to like brush our hands and completely conquer this challenge, then one of the things that we'll do in the future is we'll start our challenge on harder islands or we will actually set it up so that when we do the mutations, choosing the permanent mutations, we may do a kind of legacy style thing where we're allowed to pick one thing that goes towards our challenge goal. And then we have to give ourselves a little bit of a handicap to make things more more difficult and tricky and we would use a random generator to pick our second mutation our second permanent mutation so if this challenge turns out to be too easy don't despair i will have ways to tweak it where we will have one option to help us maybe 50 percent and one option that could potentially hinder us or even go backwards and work backwards on uh, our tribe so we may even make it in the future that we do some sort of randomized legacy challenge with our nichelings and we even have to randomize which breeding pairs would get to have a baby that day. So who knows? It might get really complicated, but for now, we're just going to focus on spots. So I will see you guys next time when we will start pecking into this island. I think it's hilarious that Rolami has showed up and she and Koana are just like best friends and she's guiding her over to the softer grasses where everybody will probably start moving. But Ami has for some reason taken this... Uh, very very interesting uh very intriguing and kind of spooky swamp like a personal challenge so she and her brother tomomi are going to dive in there and we're gonna see what's uh hiding inside of the swamp so i'll see you guys next time Bye bye